we will now extend the definition of matrix multiplication to matrices on the right that have more than one column. Now this extension is very simple because now that we have two columns in the matrix on the right, we'll simply have to calculate two linear combinations of the columns of the matrix on the left. So the answer will contain two columns, one column for this linear combination and the second column for this linear combination. In both cases, there will be linear combinations of the columns of the matrix on the left. That remains unchanged. It's just that now we're looking for two linear combinations, one with these coefficients and one with these coefficients. So it's two smaller problems in one. This larger matrix product, these two simpler ma matrix products in one. And we actually already know from the previous example, because it involved the same matrix and this column, what the first column of the answer is. And it is 14, 30, and, excuse me, 32, and 50. So this problem is already half finished. So you can always break up a larger matrix product into small matrix products where you treated one column from the matrix from the right at a time. So we're done with one half of this problem. Let's finish the other half. So we have to now calculate another linear combination of these three columns where the coefficients come from this column. And the answer will go as the second column of the matrix on the right hand side. All right, so that, those coefficients are zero, one, and one. So we simply have to find the sum of these two columns. And that sum is 5, 11, 17. 5, just making sure, 5, 11, 17. So we're done. So a few things I'd like to point out. First of all, let's make sure that this second column is in the column space of this matrix, as of course it should be, because we're once again just calculating linear combinations of columns. We're not going away from them. We're now just doing more of those linear combinations. So more and more complexity is being packed into one simple operation, maybe not so simple, but it'll be simple once you get used to it, of matrix multiplication. All right, so what's the column space of this matrix? It's the set of all vectors whose middle entry is the average of the other two. Let's make sure that still holds here. 17 plus five is 22. There you go, the middle entry is once again the average of the other two. Now what about compatibility? These matrices are clearly compatible, but we have to change the wording in the compatibility criterion a little bit. Uh, now we have to refer to the height of this matrix. We can no longer just say the number of entries because the number of entries in this matrix is six. So you have to be a little bit more precise. We can say the height. So the height of the matrix on the right must equal the width of the matrix on the left. That's one way to put it. You can say the number of rows in the matrix on the right must equal the number of columns in the matrix on the left. That's another way of putting it. The third way of putting it that would not require any change of words is by talking about the inner dimensions. The inner dimensions need to match. We can say that this first matrix is three by three, while the second is three by two. And you can see that once again, the inner dimensions match, which means that the two matrices are compatible. And not only does it signal compatibility, it also gives us the dimension of the answer. In this case, the answer will be three by two. This, these middle dimensions seem to drop out or get absorbed into each other, multiplied away. And we're only left with the outer dimensions, three by two. So that's the compatibility criterion. So let's do one more example for practice. And then I think you would have to go and do hundreds of these examples if you want to become totally comfortable with matrix multiplication. Maybe not hundreds, but so many so that you feel totally comfortable with this process and you now feel prepared to take a step back and start thinking of bigger issues and finding some bird's eye view perspectives on matrix multiplication, which are coming next. But first, let's do another example. 
All right, here's our second example. We have a two by two matrix and it's being multiplied by a two by four matrix. So in this example, we're being invited to calculate four linear combinations. In each case, it'll be a linear combination of these two columns and the coefficients will come from each of these columns. So the answer will also contain four columns. So it will also be two by four. So let's now calculate them one at a time and start thinking about taking a step back and thinking of actions. What are the columns of this matrix doing to the column of this matrix? If we're able to describe what's going on in terms of an action, that's a good thing. All right, so this column is, a, is the adder. It will, sub, it will add these two columns to each other. And the result will be three, seven, because it's one of the first column plus one of the second column. Now, this is a differencer. It's asking us to find the following linear combination. One of the first column minus one of the second column. So it's first column minus second. It's the differencer. And of course, that's minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. How would you describe this column? Well, it's the averager because it tells you to take half of the first column and add to it half of the second column. And that will be three halves, seven halves. That's the averager. Three halves, seven halves. And finally, how would you describe this column? Well, that's a column picker. It will select the second column from this matrix because it's asking you to do zero of the first column plus one of the second the result will be the second, so that's why it's a column picker, and the result is two and four. So there we go. That's our second full matrix product. And I indeed believe that you should now go and do a whole lot of these until you feel totally comfortable doing matrix products.